We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today? Um, I don't know why. I like I just know I had like the little Sloopcast sticker on my on my microphone, but it blurs it most of the time, and that bothers me. <laughs> Technology only, man. Only the YouTube audience is enjoying the little show I'm putting on right now. By the way, we're on YouTube. Uh, we are actually finally starting to get some traction over there uh, as far as like getting because all, all of our we had trouble getting our YouTube audience back together once we left the Buckeye scoop and became independent. Um, but we're starting to get some traction there. So if you've been uh, liking and commenting and doing all those silly YouTube things, we really, really appreciate it. Um and uh, like I said, the comments help, the likes help. And if you're not already subbed to us, please go over there and, and uh, subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. Uh, I, I normally say that at the end of the video instead of the beginning of the video. So uh, today, I guess I do it at the beginning of the video. Uh, Kyle, we're uh, we're gonna we're gonna work through some media day videos. How does that sound? Sounds fun. You know, when we talk about media day, that means football is right around the corner here. It's 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 upon us, Jared. This is the week that fall camp will be starting. So yeah, what better way to get us on the right track than to um, listen to what Brian Day, a few of the other uh, Buckeye players have to say last week. And um, yeah, and get ready for fall camp. I'm really excited. It's, it's finally here. The wasteland is about is to be over? behind us. Yeah. Is behind yes. us? About to, about to. Yeah. Uh, I know. I mean, we, we, we switched from wasteland to sleep camp. So listen, Kyle and I are the arbiters of when it is and when it is not wasteland and the wasteland's officially over. All right. Boom. Enjoy the oasis. That is fall camp. Waste camp. <laughs> Waste camp. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, so I just I kind of threw this together trying to get this to work real quick. So uh, if this is slightly buggy, forgive me. I tried to do a bunch of timestamps on this, so we weren't trying to go through an hour long video. So work with me if this is a little bit buggy. And uh, if you're uh, if you're out there, person, organization, company that claimed our last video that we did based off of a BTN video. I would like to state for the record that Kyle and I are providing commentary and therefore this is covered under fair use. And you should not be claiming our videos before I stick Buckeye Esquire on you. <laughs> All right, let's let's get right into it, Jared. All right. Let me switch well, over Jared's to... Getting... Yeah, well, Jared, get that together. We're going to first talk about the... Uh... The presser. <laughs> oh, I can do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll... That's extra funny okay. coming from a lawyer. <laughs> uh, let's see. So we're we're going to talk about the presser. Uh, Hickman, Jason, Stroud, and uh, Coach Day. Um, going to talk. Um, give us some information. Give us some um, answer some questions from the media here. So let's. Let's jump right into it then. All right. Uh, this first one's a bit of an introduction. It's uh, Ryan Day talking about uh, Hickman, JSN, and Stroud, who are the players who uh, they brought to the uh, Big Ten Media Days in Indianapolis. And this is a guy who's been through a lot of adversity at Ohio State. I had some injuries, but then played some really good football the last couple of years, has a, had a really good offseason, has had really good leadership. We're going to need that veteran leadership, especially early in, in the season as we kick off with Notre Dame at home. Uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba uh, had a tremendous year last year, uh, had a really strong offseason. Uh, he's one of the more competitive young men I've been around and has had a very, again, strong offseason. All three of these guys have been named to our leadership committee. And then, uh, then C.J. Stroud, uh, who... Uh, last year really grew going to last year. It's amazing at this time. He had not thrown a college football pass, uh, grew as the season went on to a Heisman Trophy finalist. Uh, but this offseason, he's been really uh, had an edge to him. Uh, he's just done a great job with his leadership. 
And so uh, because of that, we've had a really good offseason. And, and I think it's, uh, it's great to see a team come together. Uh, I think everybody, every coach will say they had a great offseason. So I'm not just going to fall in line, but, but I'm excited at what this team is. And I, I'd kind of uh, describe them as edgy this offseason. Um, an edgy offseason. Um, yeah, that, that, that's, some, that's something that we've been hearing a lot from Coach Day. Teams, uh, teams playing on the edge, edgy team. And yeah, I guess I guess the phrase we'll be hearing for the next few weeks. Sounds like Jared's type of offseason team. I don't know. I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, and we'll we'll hear it asked and talked about in later clips. Like, how does last season, a season in which, you know, at Ohio State, you don't meet expectations. How to how does that affect this season? How does last season and not achieving what you wanted to achieve affect this season? And I'm not going to go too far into that because uh, that that will be covered in uh, in future bits here. Um, this next uh, clip from Ryan Day is him talking about the difference between C.J. Stroud now versus C.J. Stroud uh, a year ago. CJ's always had uh, very good leadership skills. He's always had a voice, but uh, once you go on the field and you show credibility that you can do it, it just you, you walk a little differently, and, and guys look at you through a different lens. And I think that's been the case. Uh, I think when you're young and you go into a season you haven't played, uh, you're just trying to figure out a way to complete that first pass, get that. First <laughs> but will win, he run, Buckeye Zach? So says on your job. I hope not. The offense uh, this off season. I don't want him to. Of really taking a. A bunch of guys on defense over to his house. He's cooked for them. He's um, really probably like not. Coach, and that's what leaders do. And, and that's what really good quarterbacks do. So uh, for a third year player to take that kind of approach has been great to see. Yeah. Uh, sorry, guys, down in the discord. I I honestly was trying to uh, trying to get all this working for like an hour and a half. Uh, and I need to figure out a, ba- a way to route the sound a little bit better. I'm working on it. I promise. Um, the. Our commentary makes it more fun. Um, basically, he's talking about C.J. Stroud, you know, being a year older, um, being more comfortable in a leadership role, how he wasn't even named the starter at this point last year, although we all kind of knew. Um, yeah, it's one of the things Kyle and I sort of were going on and on and on and on about last year was you know, through the first couple se- or first couple games, it's just like, hey, Stroud's never done this before. Like, you, you can't expect him to be Justin Fields in game one, game two, game three. Give him some patience, he'll settle in, and then as the season went on, he did, in fact, settle in. And, you know, you now he feels comfortable at Ohio State being a vocal leader, uh, you know, the, the Bentley I'm sure helps with that as well. Uh, I mean, he's got money. So he's like inviting guys over to his place and not just offensive guys. Like this is maybe one of the things we, a lot of us haven't thought about with NIL is they have the, you know, CJ Stroud has the capacity to have a place where he can entertain his teammates and bring them over and feed them. And, you know, things that, Ohio State or any college player in the past, well, most college players in the past wouldn't have had the financial means to do. You want me to go to the next one, Kyle? Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe to help with our fellow uh, sleep cats down there. I don't know if it'd be, if you're able to turn on um, closed caption to maybe help, help out too. Uh, well, I, they're probably auto-generated, so this will just make it. Uh, this will just make it fun. Uh, so yeah, I, I turned I turned them on. Hopefully, they're actually in the space because I have the video slightly cropped. So we'll see how this goes. Um, this next uh, bit is Ryan Day talking about uh, what makes JSN different. Well, he, he's uh, he's not a real um, a 
talkative guy just in terms of on the field. I mean, he kind of keeps Zach himself. says when he's he not says human. People listen. And, and when he does speak, he's got a backbone. Uh, he's strong in what he says and his opinions. And, uh, and, and he believes in, in hard work. He believes in toughness. When you watch the way he plays, he's tough. Uh, you know, winning really matters to him. He tries to win every rep when he's out there. Uh, I've just been very impressed with the way he's practiced, the way he plays. He doesn't want to miss a rep. Um, that's just the way he is. He's a no-nonsense kind of guy. And he, he doesn't uh, stand for people making excuses. He doesn't stand for people not being accountable. And, um, you know, for somebody who isn't real talkative or loud, uh, he does, in his own way, hold guys accountable. And, and I think his competitiveness shows that way. And he leads by playing really, really hard. And um, I think you saw that, in the, especially in the last game. But you saw that in other games as well, just how hard he plays. Highly competitive, plays really hard, never takes a playoff, even in practice, is the summation there. Um, Kyle, what what makes JSN special to you? Uh, <laughs> and he's a Saiyan, you know. I don't know. I, th- I think he's very. What what makes him special? It's I don't know. It just some people just have that it factor, and and yeah. some people just some people don't. I mean, Braxton Miller had that it factor when when he was at Ohio State, and some players just as great of an athlete as they were and are at Ohio State. Sometimes you just you just can't teach it. Sometimes you can't teach speed. You can't teach that football IQ. And Jason has that. Yeah, I mean, it's the football IQ, and he's just very twitchy. And like I and there's and you said football IQ. Yeah, uh, he's like a zone buster, right? Um, I, I, I forget where we may have said this on the last week's episode, or this may have just, I feel like this may have happened in our, uh, sloop cats only episode, uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com always be plugging. Um, the, he reminds me of like a Wes Welker or, a, you know, a lot of the guys who were just made their money in the NFL, especially in, um, like the, the new England offense, just sort of sitting in underneath zones and running drag patterns and just destroying defenses under the middle. Mm-hmm. Jared knows his ABPs. Always be pluggings. I got there. I got there. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Kyle, new online. look off. Oh yeah. Sorry. Oh, you, 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 you intro it. Uh, I was going to say the um, thoughts about here on the next one here, thoughts on the old line, uh, new coach, new players. And yeah, those, those are do they need to be more physical? And here's what uh, uh, Brian day has to say. Um, Justin Fry's come in and done a really good job of, um, you know, talking about, you know, we're not changing things, but he does teach things different. He has a different style of coaching, a little bit different technique. And so that's been great. Uh, we have moved some different guys around. We lost Nick, we lost there. Um, but, uh, but it's good to have those other guys back. Um, I'm really excited about the off season that Dewan Jones has had. He's lost a bunch of weight. He's in really good shape. Uh, same thing with Matt Jones, Donovan Jackson stepped up, um, and had a really good off season as well. Luke has been a leader and, and Paris moves to left tackle. So, uh, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good group right there. But like you said, I don't know if it was the physicality in the run game or just maybe the fits weren't right, but when we needed to, uh, at times we didn't get it done. Other times we did. When you look at our numbers, they were very, very good and, um, you know, we did run the ball. We needed to, but uh, that balance is what we want. And certainly when you get to short yarded situations, big games, uh, red zone, you got to be able to run the ball at a high level. And that's going to be the focus. And, and the offensive line, the tight ends have a big hand in that, the running backs, but also coach Fry in the run game. So. All right. Brian, you, know what, he, oh, you want to know what he should have said, Jared? What's he that? Just said, we need to run the damn ball better. <laughs> <laughs> run the damn ball. Well, I, <laughs> I feel like Ohio State did run the ball really well at times last year. And what he does say in this clip, which is what I think we what I wanted to hear, what maybe we wanted to hear what I wanted to hear was. Not just that they're going to run the ball better, but they're going to run the ball better in the red zone on third yes. and short on fourth and short, you know, 
And, he, you know, he goes, you know, I don't know if it was toughness, but, you know, maybe we had guys playing out of position. Um, you, you, maybe we have less tackles playing guards this year is maybe the way I'm I'm reading that. Need to be more efficient uh, is what uh, Gangland says. Um, consistent. Um, he I, says, I don't know. He says, I, I, don't, I don't know if it was about being uh, tough or but eh, may, may, maybe it was. Maybe it was. I, I think I th- I think or physical, I think, being, I think was the word he used. I think being consistent is, I think, the the right choice of word there. Because we've seen the past couple of years, Ohio State just not getting it together in the first half, and then Ohio State comes out in the second half and it gets things done. Um, I'm not sure if it was in this one or if it was in the in the other um, media discussion that Ryan Day was, was in, but I think he talks about... Um, about the toughness that Ohio State's had in the second half of games, whether it was uh, against Wisconsin a couple of years ago in the uh, in the Big Ten championship game, second half in recent memory um, in the Rose Bowl against Utah, played much better in that second half. Yeah. And um, against Penn State, too, playing better in that second half, too. Just having that consistency, I think, is the biggest thing that I think Ryan Day wants to see from this football team this year. Gangland says they need to play Kyle tough. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, we should. I think we'll get to that clip a little bit later, Kyle. But yeah, may, maybe not because you already said it. <laughs> but that, that, that part really stuck out to, to me when I when I when I was um, listening to it, though. Um, but yeah, the next one here, uh, the next clip, uh, House State locker room and their leadership. Um, is there anybody beyond CJ Stroud that Ohio State looks for for um, for their leadership in the, in the locker room? Yeah, so uh, we really did an extensive uh, you know study on how we wanted to handle leadership this year. Um, we had two different uh, periods where we elected a, a leadership committee, and uh, those were you know different positions, different uh, position groups, uh, different classes. Uh, They were voted on by the team. We went through the spring. Then we re-voted as we came back off of um, the break in May. And uh, and we really intermingled the team. We tried to stay away from the position groups as much as we could. And I think that brought the team together a lot more. It also forced guys into leadership positions. I think the thing that was neat was that uh, the first round of leadership was not the same round in, in the summer. So some guys maybe, you know, took a step back. Some guys took a step up. And so uh, now as we head into the summer, we kind of have an idea who the captains are going to be because we've already gone through it once. And I think it's something that we're going to grab onto moving forward. And it's put guys in a situation to have a voice. And, um, you know, I'm hoping that this pays off for us during the season. I I find this interesting, and I'd, I'd love to get details on this. They did what Ryan Day is called leadership studies, um, where they kind of broke the team up into squads, um, that were not based on position groups, which I think is fascinating. Um, Discord crash. That's fun. Um, that, that were not based on uh, position groups per se. Um, stu- you know, and they basically went on and they had like one set of voted upon leaders before like in one group and then they came back and they re-voted and they have a different set of leaders now um i, I think all of that is fascinating uh because it, it just feels like they're trying some new stuff in regards to in regards to leadership um does my discord need to update maybe i don't know i thought i ran a full update before i turned my computer off last uh last week but here we are uh still doing some discord crashes because fun um but yeah the i again i would love to see some details on like what they were studying why they where they came up with these ideas uh i find all of that very fascinating just psychologically speaking yeah uh next one here uh talking about notre dame as a season opener and how does how does this team um Playing them in the first game uh, shaped the season. 
I think our guys feel it. I think they feel the excitement. I think they feel the anticipation. I think they uh, they just feel the community rally around this team. But that that first game being a night game is, uh, I mean, how else do you cut it? It's going to be electric, and our guys know that. So there's a little bit of urgency about them, and it's going to be this preseason. So uh, last year we started on the road at Minnesota, uh, and, and that was a big uh, conference game on a road with a very inexperienced team. So uh, we had to play well in that game. Uh, that's similar this year. Now we're at home, a little bit more experienced team, but the plan's going to be the same. We got to play really good football in that first game. Um, you know, and I think when you when you look at our our season, we have to have competitive stamina. We have to play really good at the beginning of the year. And we got to play really good at the end of the year, and that's the challenge of being Ohio State. You got to win them all, and so competitive stamina is one of the things that we've been talking about as a team. So he kind of dodges the Notre Dame question. Okay. It does. <laughs> uh, okay. You, by the way, Ryan Day is getting real good at this. Uh, when going through and creating a bunch of these clips. They almost all come down to like a minute exactly, which can't be a coincidence, right? Like someone has told him answer the question for exactly one minute and he's has a weird sense for it because if he's doing it accidentally, that's just plain weird. Um, but yeah, he basically he kind of dodges the question on Notre Dame uh, a little bit. You know, he says it's, it's helping him, you know, stay motivated through the offseason. And then he brings up competitive consistency or yeah competitive stamina rather which is a thing uh we heard him say a few times throughout different media day availabilities um and and what does that mean like I, again i sort of watched a ton of these videos listen to a ton of this audio what does competitive stamina means it means no letdowns it means being as up for notre dame as you are for Arkansas State as you are for Michigan as you are for Iowa as you are for not playing Nebraska this year but you get my point um Ryan Day watched Pitch Perfect 2 I I don't know that reference uh 1 minute is the sweet spot if you start going longer you end up pulling a Venables Oh god I have <laughs> thoughts on that but I'm not going there uh see my wow. Twitter feed um yeah, it, yep. but I like this it com, sort of competitive stamina, just being up, being ready yes. every single week. The season's a drag. It's a it lot, and it's every week, and it's just staying on top of things, not just on yep. week one, but on week two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight. Yep. yep. It sounded like I was going to keep going there, Kyle, but I wasn't. <laughs> All right. All right, next one here, uh, staying on the Notre Dame topic here, uh, was asked about Day's thoughts on Marcus Freeman and, and the direction that he's going with Notre Dame and, and wanted to hear what Ryan Day thought about that. Someone didn't like him dodging the Notre Dame question, I think is, is the <laughs> it, summary it is, of this. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, Marcus Freeman does a very, very good job. He's got a really good staff. Uh, they're very knowledgeable, very uh, energetic do a great job in recruiting, do a great job schematically. So uh, it's going to be a really big challenge for us. They have a really good team coming in to, to Ohio State. So uh, all those things kind of have our guys' attention. And um, so I think there there is a little bit of more attention to our guys, just knowing what, what a big game we have to start the season off with. You uh, got a little bit closer to answering that question. Um, compliments the hell out of Notre Dame. Loves Marcus mm -hmm. Freeman. Loves the coaching staff, loves their momentum. He dodged this question again. You know, hey, and it's, it's really good for us to have a game right on week one to keep us motivated. And yeah, he kind of dodged the question again. But he did take a lot of time to compliment every single person from the groundskeeper to the head coach over at the fine University of Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah. Apologize, Jared, if you hear some rumbling here. Got a nasty thunderstorm going here. So hopefully I don't lose connection here. Uh, as we move on to the uh, next one here. Uh, next question here was about uh, how does... Why is our Discord chat just talking about Pitch Perfect now? I have no idea. It's it's our Discord. Uh, <laughs> uh, how does losing to the, the team up north affect his offseason here? And I... 
I think this was brought up multiple times. Yeah. Um, but here, here, here's one of them. Well, every year the expectations are high, you know, and that doesn't change, you know, based on what happened the year before. Um, you know, the expectation is to win them all. And that's, you know, I said that in my opening press conference uh, when I was named the head coach, and that's just the way it is. So, you know, maybe in some places 11-2 and two with a Rose Bowl victory is a good year. It isn't at Ohio State. And so uh, our three goals are beat the team up north, uh, win the Big Ten Championship, win the National Championship. That's that's the goal. Those three things didn't happen last year. So uh, that didn't change this year, next year, or the year before. Uh, just a different team, um, a different, um, you know, group of guys, more experienced. Um, you know, again, when you think about those first few games last year, I mean, we just we had a lot of young guys, and now we've gone through a whole season of offseason together. I think our guys are a little scarred. They're a little calloused. Um, they know what it's like to lose a game, and that's not fun. And so, you know, uh, we remind our guys about that regularly, uh, but we also know we have to move forward and focus on what's coming next. Boom. That's how you again, close Jared, out a YouTube video right there. Exactly a minute there. <laughs> yeah, he's he's in, he's incredible at that. Uh, um, you know, that's the other thing you will hear repeated is our three goals. Our three goals. You know, mm -hmm. beat Michigan, win the Big Ten, win the national title. He, we'll go on to hear from some players next, but that's what you will continue to hear over and over and over and over and over again. Our three goals, competitive stamina. Um, there, there are a lot of points, you know, there, there, there was some training taking place in the, in the, I was going to say plane ride. They may have taken a car to Indianapolis. <laughs> um, competitive consistency, our three goals, repeated throughout yeah um i know we're already um a little bit longer than i thought we would have gotten here jared um i lined up more other... videos than i figured we'd have time for so if you want to skip <laughs> yeah. a few go right ahead yeah so um the next things we had on here we'll just kind of skip but we'll kind of talk about it real quick here we don't have to play them but um next thing we had on here was about the big 10 interviewing uh the players uh, it was CJ Stroud, uh, JSN, and uh, Ronnie Hickman. I think overall, the, both all three of them did an excellent job with their questions that were laid out to them. And <laughs> I think there was there was one of them. Uh, I think they asked um, Hickman about um, what they look for, what they look forward to in the season. I think I think it was CJ Stroud. Just you can you can barely hear him and say three goals. I didn't even, I didn't line that one up, but yeah, like CJ Stroud's coaching guys. You, I think, I think it was JSN actually where okay. you, it was, it was directed at JSN and then it was just like, you know, what are you doing for the season? And you know, what, what's your expectations right, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. JSN of the three of them. And I think Ryan day said at some point that he's like more of a quiet leader. Uh, JSN is more of a lead by example guy. And was probably the least comfortable on the Big Ten Network set, uh, I, I would say. And so, like, he was, like, sort of thinking, okay, what am I going to say here? And you, you heard you heard CJ Stroud just be like, the three goals. The three goals. <laughs> even, even without him even getting a chance to answer it, like, as soon as the question was asked, you, you, heard, you heard Stroud saying the three goals. And then, and then like, he took a, he took a minute to – to take a breath and then and then mentioned um, about the three goals that every year for Ohio for Ohio State beat the team beat the beat the team up north, win the conference, win a national title. We want to hear Ronnie you're... Hickman talk about the new defense though. I do like this clip. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and play that one then. Yeah. Hickman talking about the new yeah, just like what Jared said about the new on, defense here. What he's done to the defense so far. He wants us to play fast and physical. You know, one of the things he talks about a lot is, is us being able to play offense on defense, being able to dictate what they do just by how we align and stuff like that. You know, he wants us to use our athletic ability to our advantage. You know, he wants us to be able to just go out there and play. The more thinking, the slower you play, and the slower you play, the more bigger plays happen for the offense. You know, he wants us to play, be able to play fast and win. How do you put... All right, and before we do any commentary, let's hear C.J. Stroud's uh, side of the equation of facing the new defense. 
definitely been more challenging. Uh, I appreciate Coach Knowles coming in and not just trying to be a coach, but also trying to uh, be a, a leader on the team as well. I definitely think that's more important because uh, then your guys really want to play for you. So, I mean, then for me, just getting uh, – just being a competitor I am, just like seeing the defenses that they bring. And it's been it's been challenging at times, but you want that. You want both sides to uh, have a good day. Like, the offense will have a good day, the defense will. So, that's what you want as well. In what ways is it – Yeah, and, you know, it's – we heard a lot of – we heard a lot of the classic um, – we heard a lot of the uh, – Hickman will be – Beat favorite interviewee this year? Hmm. Interesting. I'll have to think about that one. A um, couple things to take away here. One of my favorite... Uh, by the way, I was going to finish my last thought. We had a lot of the classic Ohio State cliches here. The three goals. Um, we had a, a lot of the classic Ohio State... What we, What we did not hear... What I wanted to hear in this moment was iron sharpens iron. And what you do hear, he, what you do hear CJ Stroud say is, you know, he appreciates the defense being more aggressive, giving him more looks, giving him more variety, uh, doing more pre-snap movement during practice. Uh, he's enjoying being a little more confused and a little more challenged and a little more, you know, this is exactly what you want to be hearing. We also hear the phrase, I forget if Hickman or Stroud said it, um, playing offense on defense, not sitting back and waiting. Um, at what point is iron sharpens iron a given? Uh, you know, when, when for the players, never. You got you got to let the players fall back on cliches. Maybe you don't want to hear Ryan Day say it. Um, although Ryan Day did give us a classic Meyer saying JSN is you know one of the most competitive guys I've ever been around. The the classic that I've ever been around line. He he, he did Every pull a year. bit of a Meyer on that one. Every, Every year. year someone is the most something that he's ever been around. Yeah. Um, and then the, so, and then the, la the last ones that um that they were asked about. About the expansion and about Stroud being a California native, and then his thoughts about the addition of USC and UCLA. Even though pretty much all three of these guys won't get to play play these teams, no. they won't be around. Neither of these guys are going to be on the team next year. I'll just go ahead and say that. <laughs> yeah, and and I mean they they pretty much they pretty much said yeah. It's, I think it's great for the conference, great for recruiting, and and yeah. It, getting that Ohio State USC matchup potentially maybe on a yearly basis. It's it's gonna be great. It's gonna be oh, great, I, great for college football. I Kyle and I redesigned the new Big Ten schedule a couple bit a uh, couple weeks back. Kind of a three safety or you know three scheduled games, three rival mm -hmm. rival games every year. Um we included USC and Ohio State as a protected rival. I want that. Again, because iron sharpens iron. Um, yep. There's a great tidbit in in this from C.J. Stroud. So I'll, I'll see if everyone else right, picks yeah, up the same me, thing I, I just, do. I don't know, man. I have mixed emotions about it. I definitely would have loved to play in the Coliseum or just back home again. Uh, playing the Rose Bowl kind of uh, let me do that, so I'm happy for that. But uh, I definitely think it's a great thing. I definitely think that uh, helps recruitment out, uh, out as well, like being a West Coast guy, being from California. Uh, it was hard traveling 2,000 miles, you know what I mean? But I wanted to play against other competition other than just the Pac-12, and I want to go to the Big Ten. So now they have the opportunity to do that. And I think the Midwest guys who are in the Midwest have an opportunity to go to the West Coast to see what that's about. So I definitely appreciate uh, the NCAA for working that out. And, and the Big Ten, I think, is definitely a positive thing. Yeah, and what do you think about I think two things here, Jared. Yeah. One, one from a recruiting standpoint, getting someone to travel that far to the Midwest is hard. And then, okay. and then the, and then the second thing is like, I wanted to be in a, <clears throat> a more competitive <laughs> and wanting to, to go into the big 10 there. Yeah. A, a, a big, a big, a big jab to the PAC 12 conference. He, he did his best to say it as nicely as possible and to not make it as obvious as possible. But he basically said, I but. didn't want to play a yeah, but there was a but coming, but of there course was there but. was, <laughs> I didn't want to play for USC or UCLA because I didn't want to pay, play in an inferior conference. 
Yep, yep. That is what was said. Yeah. All right. Um, moving on here, Jared. Here, uh, I don't think we want to play all of these, but if no. there's any you want to you want to pick out here, feel free to feel free to uh, shoot one out. But uh, so the Big Ten Network interviews Coach Day here, and of course they talk about to start off about how Day and Chip Kelly uh, found out about USC and UCLA joining the Big Ten. And I know there's a there's a thing from a week, a couple of weeks ago, somebody posted about, yeah, they, they found out while they were on the golf course together. When, but we got Day's, a couple. I, 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 actually, actually, it was our wives. Yeah, no, let, let, let him let it. him tell the story, Kyle. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we we heard different versions of this story. So let's let's get the uh, let's get the actual truth. Um, All right, playing at his golf tournament, he was actually in the group ahead of us, and uh, so we tee off and we drive up, and uh, both of our wives are kind of you know uh, at the turn there, and actually at our house, uh, our summer home there, and so subtle brag. Uh, there's a little, there's a little bit, of a, a little bit of a brag there, right? Ch- uh, we're, you know, at my at my summer home, which is on the golf course. We see you, Ryan Day. So they're there and kind of handing out waters to people, and uh, so they say, you know, you, you realize what just happened? I said, no. They said, <laughs> you know, you guys are in the same conference now. I go, what? They go, yeah. Chip just drove off. We told him, and now we're telling you. So the truth is, our wives told us that this was going on. Uh, we quickly got calls uh, from Gene and from, uh, and I think um, you know Chip got a, a call from Martin, and we found out, and we were excited. So we started off the uh, the rounds in different conferences. We end in the same. <laughs> oh, and the sucking up media thinks it's the funniest story of all time. <laughs> oh, money! <laughs> Chip versus Day Wars incoming. Uh, not, 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 not if Chip doesn't start winning games. He's on the hot seat at UCLA right now. You, Chip Kelly might never coach in the Big Ten if he doesn't turn shit around pretty quickly. Um, yeah. To quote Bo Bishop, ball ain't gonna spike itself. Chip versus Day already started on the golf course. That's a good point. That That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. All right. uh, uh, yeah, just that, that's a funny story. I, I don't have any, I don't have a lot to say about that. All right, next thing here, day on changes in the O line room. Uh, and I know I think he mentioned it a little bit, and uh, actually no, he he didn't here. Um, maybe maybe he did in the in the presser, but he talks about about the player about presumably who who the who the starters are going to be. And- uh, he's I don't think it's a presume at this point. I think he's he's straight up already told us who. I mean, yeah. we already knew who four of the and five he, were. We we now he, know that Matt Jones is the starting guard. We know this now. He's said it a few times. Yeah, and how how some of the players have gotten much better, uh, lost some lost some good weight, and getting to uh, the size that they 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 need to be come on week one. So, like a lot of the times, what you have to listen to when you listen to these press conferences is what's not being said. Um, he talks, um, a few times, actually, uh, I'll go ahead and this was actually the end of the interview, but it's what I want to talk about right now. So screw it. I'm going to play this. Um, go ahead and take a listen to this that we got to continue to build on. I think at some point we know at some point we're going to hit adversity. Even, even the rivalry game last year it was close at halftime. We just didn't respond well in the second half. We wouldn't play well really in the first half of that Rose bowl, but we responded Guys came together at halftime. Leadership showed up. We played much better in the second half. Those games are coming. Uh, we played right here against Wisconsin, um, and you know we were down at halftime. We came back and played really good in the second half a few years ago. Those type of those type of things are coming. So we got to make sure that we're ready for that moment, and then continue to build toughness. Coach, you mentioned leadership and toughness. It was two things he brought up again and again and again during the media day. What does that tell you? If he, if that's been the focus of the off season, if that's what he feels the need to hit and hit and hit and hit and hit over and over and over again. And you know, it's not just today because the players were saying the same thing. The players were saying the same thing. So it's, it's in their heads too. 
if he is taking leadership and toughness this seriously, that tells you that he feels like there was a leadership and toughness issue on last year's team. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I, and I think, I don't think we played it, but uh, <laughs> CJ Stroud saying, saying, uh, I think pretty much the same question was asked to CJ Stroud and Stroud said that no, the, the, the leaders from last year were, were really good, but not, not any knock to them, but I feel like that we have a really good leadership this year and blah, blah, blah after that too. So, but yeah, I've, I, I felt the same way listening to day and Stroud and others um, talking about leadership, toughness, edgy, all the, all those um, words that you keep hearing over and over again. And yeah, I, I, yeah, it, it, it's clear as day that that was, uh -huh. that, that's pretty much, um, I wouldn't surprise me if that's what was written all over in their locker room and throughout the season for them to, to, um, to read every By single way, day. Speaking of reading in between the lines and what, uh, what is said by not being said is that the way that NIL was designed is the way our guys are doing it. Sorry, real quick. This is, he's talking about NIL, but uh, uh, all right. All right. Talking a little bit about NIL here. Doing it, and they're doing a great job in Columbus and, 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 you know, put a lot of money in their pocket, but they're doing it the right way with their name, their image, and their likeness. Um, I think it's a challenge with when you start to mix in the collectives, when you start to mix in, um, you know, one-time transfer rules, boy, there's a lot of dynamics at play there. Um, but, but I think our guys have had a pretty good, done a pretty good job of managing that part of it. But now they also know it's time to play football and the off season is good for them. But once, once the fall hits, it's, it's about business. You mentioned it. Man, what I really like about our players and what I really like about what's happening in Columbus right now is that we're doing NIL the right way. Oh, isn't it great that all of our players are doing NIL the right way with their name, their image, and their likeness? Isn't it fantastic that here at Ohio State and here in the city of Columbus that we're doing NIL the right way? What's not being said there, Kyle, that is clearly being said? Uh, well, a couple of things that come into my mind. Uh, of course, rule one, Dr. Lies. Whoa, 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 whoa. How dare you? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> don't use um, my own phrases what, 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 against me. What, what, what is the right way? What is the right way? <laughs> what he's saying here is that other people aren't. Well, well, to be, to be fair too, like there isn't really any, yes, there good is good guide, any good guidelines right now. And there's a lot of gray there areas that, that need to be ironed out. There are not good guidelines right now, but there are some rules in place and yeah. the rules, the rules state pretty clearly that you're not allowed to have deals lined up for players before they ever sign. You're not allowed to basically be able to say, Hey, the second you sign, we have company X company Y and company Z ready to pay you $250,000 each Gar the, and so when you start talking about gray areas, it's okay, for example, if you okay. are, if you're Ryan Day, it is okay to say to Rayola, as, as an example, hey, here's how much money CJ Stroud's making. This is how much money the starting quarterback at Ohio State is making. Here are the deals he has in place. Uh, what Spike says, basically, don't promise a number. Well, not even don't promise a number. Don't guarantee. Don't have deals lined up. Okay. You what, what about what about what Ryan Day mentioned um, a few months ago, or maybe it was longer than that? He mentioned about a number, saying this is this is the number. The price of a need. roster at Ohio State is about ten million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't isn't that kind of no on that line too? Absolutely not. For one thing, he was in a he was in a room talking to boosters. He didn't say this on television. He didn't say this to a player. Did it get out? Of course it did. But that's him talking to boosters, basically saying, this is what it cost. And that's fine. He's again, he's talking to boosters and he's saying, This is what we're seeing. This is the help we need. 
Mm -hmm. That's fine. What you can't do is, again, um, I, I've heard rumors of, you know, basically, let's just say Company O. Did I make that up out of nowhere? No, I did not. Did, company O says to player, hey, if you transfer, which is extra illegal, you shouldn't be talking to players about transferring who aren't in the transfer portal. That's extra illegal. But this, this still applies to a recruit. Hey, we're school O. We have company N. Read into that if you'd like. We have company N who's ready to pay you $250,000 the second you transfer here. O for oil company. No, the school was O. The company was N. I don't think I don't think that I don't think that's that hard to figure out if I'm being honest with you guys. Um, <laughs> basically told the kid, um, if you transfer, company N has two hundred and fifty thousand dollars waiting for you. That, again, is extra illegal because it's transfer, but it's also illegal. Per the rules in by that the NCAA does have in place to say you're getting a signing bonus. It's already here. It's waiting for you. This is your signing bonus. That's illegal. You can't do that. It is okay for Ryan Day or whomever to say, here are the current players on the roster and here's how much money they are making. You're not promising the kid anything. Rayola or whomever, uh, Ohio State's new quarterback commit, uh, Brock Glenn, for example. You can say to these guys, this is how much money CJ Stroud is currently making. You can't say the second you sign, you're going to be making as much money as CJ Stroud. Or I promise you, when you are named the starter, if you were named the starter, you will make X amount of money. There is a little bit of a gray area there, except when you say, if you sign X number of dollars are waiting for you, that is not gray. You cannot do that. And that is happening. Gotcha. All right. Uh, I think one of the last blah, ones blah, blah, the blah <laughs> segment of the podcast, that's an excellent reference. I think one of the last things here, uh, before we wrap it up, I want to hear about, uh, Coach Day talking about new coach, uh, no coach knows and the new uh, new look on defense because I think that's going to be the biggest point of emphasis that we're going to hear all season, not not I, just fall camp. We're going to hear all season, all about, all all about off season. Knowles. You're going to hear two things repeated: defensive scheme, offensive line. If Ohio State can be good in those areas, they're winning the national title. No, I didn't know that. I said good. And I didn't say great. I said good. I think good. I think when you combine the experience that our guys come back with from last year, uh, along with his coaching style, um, kind of a new look on defense, you know, with Perry and Tim and you know, Larry's back, but, but, but Jim's style is, is excellent. The CC uh, there, dude. Uh, a lot of confidence. Oh, uh, put in a lot of defense. It, it was off the screen. The way that he teaches, it doesn't feel heavy. Um, he's been very impressed and shared with me uh, how well our guys have learned and how quickly they've learned and how, how much they've uh, you know, got a lot of extra work in to try to learn the defense. And they're very eager. You know, they're very prideful. And uh, I think we've got a lot of talent on the defensive side of the ball. We're deep. And I think with the scheme, we've got a chance to be pretty good. Coach, you're considered I We got a chance to be pretty good. We got a chance to be pretty good. I don't know. I'm getting excited. That's all I'm going to say. Um, as, I mentioned, he, as I mentioned, Jared. It, I'll just real, real quick, Kyle. We're not going to play the next clip. He goes on in the next clip to talk about how excited he is about the talent depth that they have on defense. That's that that that's me summing up a minute of him talking. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I, I agree with Jared. It's really got me got me excited as well here. I mentioned we are we're just a few days away from fall camp starting and yeah and then before we know it it'll be week one when we get to when we get to do our preview of um, Ohio State Notre Dame be here before we know it 
Speaking of previews, Kyle, everyone tuned in for the Wednesday episode. We're doing our Big Ten preview. All right, Kyle, that, that, that was such a beautiful segue. Kyle, um, do you have anything else as we are running long here, as I kind of anticipated we probably would um, always be plugging, of course. Um, the Anything else like uh, Kyle, it's, Kyle? It's time for Kyle's Corner. I don't know what the hell I was trying I, to say there. It's I, I, th- I think Corner. I'm going to... I think I'm going to stick with Ohio State here. Just a few key points from this last week here. <sighs> recruiting, it's not been a fun two weeks here. It's probably one of the worst two-week recruiting. Hey, hey, um, hey, and, hey, hey, hey. I want to say this. In quite, I want to say a this. A four-star tight end and a four-star quarterback have joined the team. Did they miss on some defensive guys? Yes. Uh, did they lose a cornerback to presumably Florida? Yes happens he yeah the south florida kid urban meyer once said uh when a south florida kid commits all you really know is that you're in their top three (laughs) that's 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 the way of the world um so good luck to the young man i hope he feel but that's where Corey raymond is now by the way Corey raymond's legitimately one of the best cornerback coaches who has ever lived I don't mind losing a corner to Corey Raymond. That's Corey Raymond is that guy. That's like losing a defensive end to to Larry Johnson senior. That's like losing a wide receiver to Brian Hartline. It's like losing a quarterback to Ryan day. It happens. Yeah. In part in on a, on a, um, on a, a hard note here, uh, because because it is it is this kind of news is it's close close to my heart here, uh, uh, William White, uh, former Buckeye, former yeah, yeah. Uh, Detroit Lions, um, player passed away um after a six year battle of ALS. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, father of Brendan White too. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. That that disease sucks. Absolutely, absolutely sucks. And uh. Yeah, it's devastating here hearing William White passing passing at that young of an age. And uh and, and close to my where I grew up too. He he went to um he went to Lima Senior High School too. And yeah, it's it's it sucks. Definitely definitely be thinking of his family and I know it's 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 a tough disease to to go through. Yeah, uh obviously close to Kyle's heart. Um I, I mean, close to all of us. Um, I don't care what they say. It's getting more. We're being told it's not happening more often, but I don't believe them. Um, uh, yeah. So that's obviously hard news. There's no, there's no good way to transition out of that. So um, I will just go ahead and say that uh, it's time to end the show. Um Tonight's ending music uh, will be brought to you by uh, Columbus, definitely Ohio. Uh, they're called the Soul Monsters, maybe Cleveland, maybe Akron. I forget, uh, but they're called the Soul Monsters. So uh, stay tuned for them. And with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Soul Monsters. Mm-hmm.